If you have ever worked with rule tiles in Unity before, you know how much pain in the ass is to set them up. Tagging all of the sprites in and setting the rules can take more than 10 minutes for each individual file, taking away a lot of time from the level designing process. Well, you can now say goodbye to this method of creating them, because in this video I'm gonna show you how you can create them literally in seconds, using a custom editor tool which we'll be making. The tool is gonna have three main functions. First, it will create a list of neighbor rules, these arrows, from a list of template images. Then, it will use the template and the list of our sprites to generate the rule tile. And finally, it will save it to our assets, so we can use it in game. We'll start by creating a new script for our editor window. I'm gonna call this rule tile generator, but you can call it whatever you like. The first thing we'll do is to delete the through default function in the class and that the using unity editor and using unity engine the tile maps tags to the top of the script. After we read the using tags, we can change the money behavior to editor window. To show our editor window, we'll need two methods, one to open the window and one to show content in it. The function, which will display content in the editor window, needs to be called on GUI. The function which will be reveal our editor window can be called anything, I'm gonna call it show window. Inside, you will need to write the get window function with the class and the name of the window. We also need a way to execute this function from the editor, so we are gonna add the menu item attribute before the function. This will add the button to the top menu row in Unity. Now that we are done with the setup, we can start programming our editor window. We will start with the scroll view, so the scroll bar will appear when the window will be too small to show the content. After that, we can add the label, so things look nice. And then comes a little complicated part. We need to display a list of sprites, so we can later use them to get the neighbors of the tiles. But the problem is that by default, there's no way to show an array or a list in a custom editor. Luckily, we can use a fairly simple workaround, which you can see now. You'll need to put your variable in the fight property function as a string. This will display the variable like it would in the default inspector. Just make sure your variable is public. One frustrating thing that Unity does is that your sprites need to be marked as read and write enabled in order to get data from it, so we can add the little help box to tell the user. Now that we have our list ready, we can add the button to use that list and get the neighbors. One last thing we can do to make this editor more clean is to only show this section if our neighbor rules have not been set yet. So we can put all this code inside an if statement. Time to get the neighbor rules from our template image. First, we'll create a neighbor list and reset it inside a method. The rule tile uses a list of integers for each tile to specify what rule to put in what position. But just using positions in random order wouldn't work out. We need to set them in the exact same order as the tile does. We could make a dummy tile and get the list of positions, but a very simple solution is just to copy the list and paste it in our script. Now that everything is set up, we can make a for each loop to get the rules for every sprite in the template sprites list. Inside the for loop, we will create a temporal list for our integers for our rules. Then, we can use the pixel corals from the sprite to set the rules. But it's not that simple, because if the sprite is sliced, which most likely is because of the tile maps, the sprite the texture will return the entire image, not just that section. So first, we will need to get the rect of the slice, get the colors, then create a new texture with the dimensions of the slice and apply the colors to that texture. We can now use this texture to set the rules. We we'll loop through each of the neighbor positions. We will check the pixel based on the position. If the position is minus one, the pixel coordinate will be 0. If the position is 0, the pixel coordinate will be half of the texture size. And if the position is 1, the pixel coordinate will be the texture size. We'll do this for both the x and y coordinate. Then we can just use the pixel coordinate to get the pixel color. If the color is white, we'll set the rule to any. If the color is green, we'll set the rule to this. And if the color is red, we'll set the rule to not this. 
After we loop through all of the position and got the rules, we can add the temporary list to the list of neighbor rules. One last thing we can add to this function is to get a default image for the tile. The default image will be that one, which doesn't have neighbors. Before the second for each loop, let's set the boolean, with a default value of true. This boolean will be set to false, if the current rule contains at least one green pixel. If the boolean is still true after the loop, we can save the index to a variable. Don't forget to increment the index because we are using for each loop, not a for loop. The hardest part is now done. Let's go back to the ongui function. After our neighbor rules are set up, we can display the next options. We can check the length of the array to check if we already loaded the template or not. If the template is loaded, we can display some preview of it. As this tutorial is not about editor windows, I don't want to waste time with it. But there is if anyone is interested. Maybe if enough people want a more detailed explanation, I can make a tutorial about it. Let me know in the comment section if you do. Anyway, back to the tiles. Now we can show another array of sprites, but this time it's for the actual tiles. As we don't want any trouble with the system, we'll check if the length of the template sprites is the same as the length of the tiles. If no, let the user know why we don't allow them to proceed. If yes, we can continue with our code. A tile has a bit more variables and setting than just the rules, so let's set some input fields for the default type, the collider type, the game objects, and the name of the tile. We will create these variables somewhere else in the script. We can also add the default sprite, which we set up in the load template method. And finally, let's add the button to generate the rule tile. We are done with our own GUI method, so let's create the save tile and the generate rule tile methods. Let's add our variables which we set in the own GUI method and create the generate rule tile function. In the function, the first thing we will do is to create an instance of a rule tile scriptable object. After that, we can set up the default sprite, the default collider, and the default game object. For the tiling rule, we will loop through the tile sprite with a for loop. First, we will create a new tiling rule, then set the sprite. As the tile can be animated, it uses a sprite array instead of a single sprite. This isn't going to be animated, so we can just replace the first sprite in the array. We can now set the corresponding neighbor rules, set the collider type, and set the default game object. We can add the tiling rule to the list of tiling rules in the rule tile, and finally, we will return our newly generated tile. We will take this tile and put it in the save tile function. This function is even simpler than the previous one. First, we will save the asset in our desired location, and then we will focus on the save the set in the project window. And we are done. Let's try it, shall we? We can open the window with the menu item we specified in the script. You can find it at the top of the Unity window. Now, we need to add our templates to the list. If you do that one by one, we wouldn't save a lot of time with it. But luckily, because this is a list, we can just shift select all of the sprites and drag them in all at once. Once we are done, we can click on the button to load the template. After that, we can do the same thing with the tile sprites. You can change the settings, rename the sprite, and we can finally click on the generate tile button. If you already had a template before, this process shouldn't take you more than just a minute, or even half a minute. And if you don't have a template, don't worry, I'll provide you one in the description down below. So far this tool has shown us how much time it can save us, but let's actually compare it to the traditional method of creating a rule tile. We'll compare the tool to creating a new tile by hand, and using an existing tile to create a different one. Ready? Set, go. And the templates are already set up. Let's rename the tile. And generate it. With the tool, it only took us 24 seconds to create a tile. That's... that's something. Let's speed it up a little bit, because our other two methods are quite slow. We finished replacing the tiles in 2 minutes and 44 seconds. 
That's not horrible, but it's definitely slower than the two. Let's speed it up even more. Our traditional method of creating rule tiles finally done. It took us almost 12 minutes to create a new rule tile. Compared to the tool, it took ages. As you can see, with the tool, creating a new rule tile only takes seconds, which will save you a ton of time in the future. That's it for this tutorial. If you found it useful, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. See ya!